So she does all kinds of things. She's going to tell you about herself and what exactly she is all up to. So um, I'm just going to let you talk about yourself besides the fact that she's awesome. Oh, I love her. she is so. sensational. I hope you're trying to get more techie. Oh, uh, well, let me hold on one sec. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I'm actually gonna. All right, this thank y'all. Uh, for being patient, I promise. Twelve minutes, thirteen seconds is all I, I'm gonna give you. What did you say? Twelve <laughs> minutes and thirteen seconds. I told you I am elementary. That's about as long <coughs> of attention span that I'm not only kids have but adults have as well. So, uh, I'm Tanya White from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, my uh, topic is yes, I am enough to walk in the authority of the power of me. So, Woo! we're gonna start off with a song. Aww, yes. You can get up if you want to, or you can stop your feet. Um, but music changes our mood and gets yes. us in the mindset of really what's coming next. Is this on here? Uh, yeah. It's on YouTube. Okay. So, this song, I heard in 2003, and the words, this is the chorus, so when we get to the chorus, it says, I'm walking in authority, living life without apology. It's not wrong, dear. I belong here. So you might as well get used to me. So by the uh, third course, we're going to have a little sass in it, okay? So we get to stand up and be sassy. You can be stand up. You can walk yes. and stomp. But this song really began my journey. Uh, the Tanya you see now is 47 years old and 265 days. My birthday's in, in 100 days, y'all. So y'all can tell me happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a New Year's Eve baby, so I take hey, my, all. Oh, okay. Thank you. Capricorn Cuties up in here. <laughs> What's your name? Rebecca. Rebecca. Yes, because you get the after New Year's and people forget, don't they? I get the New Year's Eve and oh, I forgot your mind. You won't forget my birthday is New Year's Eve. <laughs> uh, so we're going to get to movement. Uh, so when we, uh, it starts out with the course, I'm walking in authority. And this is to set the tone because before you can really walk in the power of me, you have to know that you have some authority and you have to let go of all the negative mindsets that were program like food she, she said food I said yes yes people always I've always been a big girl and I've always been saying oh you're so beautiful to be a big girl what does that mean exactly yeah nothing <laughs> I like chocolate yes and I like to have it for breakfast sometimes yes it is a, it is milk isn't it it's it's milk and chocolate Look, I tell my kids, I give them a list of Miss White's favorite snacks. And my favorite snack is Hershey cookies and cream. And I can guarantee you, in about two more weeks, I will get some about three or four. Because I'm going to remind them, you know. Didn't I tell you at the beginning of the year what I like? <laughs> so, let's sing this song up. Let's play it. Okay. Sherry's going to be my guitar. Oh, good. DJ Sherry um, got it off a little bit. Oh, it jumped. Sorry. I'm walking in authority. Yes. Living life without apology. It's not wrong, dear. I've been long, dear. So you might as well get used to me. I don't know the verse. Here I come, y'all. Can you tell them elementary? Uh-huh. Y'all see the key on my outfit. Ready? Ready? Go. I'm walking in authority. Living life without apology. It's not wrong here. Be 
we're gonna take one more time. Y'all ready for your session? Yeah. <laughs> I have an alter ego called Beyonce. <laughs> you know. I might do the Sasha Fierce. <laughs> Almost here, y'all. They always say, we're just going on with white men. Because we're always singing. Good night. Y'all ready? Ready? Let's get to set. I'm walking in authority. Living life without apology. It's not wrong here. I belong here. So you might as well get used to me. Sing it again. I'm walking in authority, living life without apology. Y'all sound so beautiful. It's not wrong, dear. I belong here, so you might as well get used to me. Everybody walk in authority of the power of me. You have to first get your mind transformed, even if you don't feel like you're walking in authority. That song gives you a little pep, doesn't it? Yes. I heard that song like in 2005. Now, what is this, 2018? In 2005, it was just a little song, Walking in Authority. I really, I heard the words, but I really didn't believe it because I was still not exercising the power of me. At that time, 2005, my mom had died of lung cancer. Came out of nowhere, didn't even know she had lung cancer. Five months in the hospital, boom, bam, the woman who gave me life lost hers. So I was going through a transition. My dad died in 96. So we were literally orphans. I'm the oldest of three. I take that position seriously. You better do what I say, because I'm going to be oldest child. What are you talking about, little girl? You are the little sister. You're the little brother. So I take that. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, I have a brother who's 35, a sister who's 42. 42. Thank you. That's her mom. 42. Um, mom's been gone 13 years. So in those 13 years, the time you see now has evolved. All right. In 2005, I was trying to reposition my life. Remember, my parents, my parents were married until my dad died. They always gave us the best life possible. They always instilled uh, self-esteem, always gave us a lot of experiences. We were always on the road every summer somewhere. My dad was country, so we had to get on the road at 3 o'clock to beat yeah. the traffic. What traffic's at 3 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> None. <laughs> Joe White, ain't no traffic on the road at 3 o'clock. But every, every summer, we would leave at 3 o'clock. He was from Hopkinsville. He believed, get up when the roosters crow. <laughs> so, uh, gave us experiences, traveled. I went to uh, Catholic school. I was in everything. Ballet, guitar, oh. clarinet, piano, dance. Can I do any of them now? Nah. I think I can play holy, holy, holy on the piano. <laughs> clarinet, I don't even know. Guitar, strong. <clears throat> Sometimes when I think I'm Taylor Swift or something, <laughs> I go in that fantasy, but... A uh, very good life. Um, so they tried to instill in me self-confidence. But how many know we're all born with being a, a self-confidence? We're all born with the power to be us, uniquely, magnetically, phenomenal as who we are. Uh, but the world bruises us. Mm -hmm. They try to put us in that little box, as you talk about, with food, um, with looks, mm -hmm. with what you should be. I came up at a time where... Uh, I was just the first generation of females to go to full university and get a, a four-year degree. Because before then, my mom's generation, it was, you know, you just go to business school, become a secretary. My grandmother's generation, you're just going to be a domestic worker. Um, and so my generation was the first to actually be encouraged to go to college and seek four-year degree. Now, they always said... Women should go be what? Nurses, nurses. teachers, teachers. <laughs> some service. I was rebellious. I'm not going. I'm going to be an executive. 
at that time Dynasty was on, so I wouldn't be talking <laughs> on my own makeup and power empire because I love makeup. I love all that cutesy girly stuff. That's why I wanted to be. So I was gonna start out being an accountant and work my way up. Well, how many know you gotta pass the accounting courses <laughs> to become an accountant? Yeah, I couldn't pass the accounting 301. So I was like, do I really want to be an accountant? No, let me switch to management. I can still do business. My dad always told me, you need to go into education. No, no why? Because you told me to. I'm very strong-willed. Aren't, aren't Capricorn strong-willed? Mm -hmm. Very strong. Hard-headed. Hard it's the goat. It's stubborn. Yeah, it's so don't tell me what I should do. <laughs> you can suggest to me, but if you tell me, I'm going the other way. So it took me, to, I was 29 when I finally got into education. And I loved it. I loved education. I started out as a special <coughs> education teacher. Found out that was my calling. That's why I love Evan. Took me years and I went back to be a school counselor. Last year I finished my principal certification, so I'm waiting patiently to become a principal. So I love educating, and it's not just educating the kids, it's educating the staff, it's educating the parents, being a community connector. I love all of those. I couldn't do any of that until I realized that I had power to be uniquely, phenomenally me. So it started out, Taking back to 2005, my life was changing. And so I had to redefine myself without parents. Who am I? Who is Tanya? And I found out, you know, I was, I, I was very difficult. You know, <laughs> so I wrote a book, How to Deal with a Difficult Woman. <laughs> <laughs> a survival guide for dealing with the wackiest, wishy-washy, and worsen women in your life. Because when I'm going through that self-reflection, Look, Tanya, you're a little impatient. You're a little stubborn. You can be difficult. And so instead of people leaving my life all the time, I wrote me a hand guide. So listen, deal with me. There are some hurts that I'm going through that I show you in here. This is a, a conflict resolution guide. It's not saying women are difficult. Really, it was saying I'm difficult and I need you to be patient with me. Now, if you find yourself in these 52 profiles, like I did, then... That's good. But I wrote this book as therapy. How many people know that therapy, whether you're sitting on somebody's couch or you're doing it yourself or you're listening and watching Iyanla fix my life like I do every Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> that just therapy, looking at who you are, gives you what? Power to be you. You got to go back and see. You know, I don't care how great your life was. There are some things that are stifling you now. That happened in your past and you have to go back and really deal with those so i wrote this book how to deal with a difficult woman everybody go get one because i'm pretty pretty sure that we all you get a book. You get a book. yes we all <laughs> deal with this so this was 2007 that i actually published this so i finally found out okay i'm difficult somebody deal with me with patience with kindness with a little uh say look tanya you shouldn't have done that. Okay, just deal with me that way. But when you understand the why I act like that, there's a different approach on how you deal with people. And so after that, okay, I deal with me. My next book was 2008, Relationship Reruns, How to Break the Cycle of Choosing the Wrong People for the Right Relationship. Because in the Bible, if you believe in the Bible, it says that it's good for us, it's, it's not good for men to be alone. Uh, and that's just, with a spouse or friends, we are social creatures. But sometimes we get, because we got a, a hole in our heart that is, you know, wanting to fill it up with people, we choose the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And that's where the bruises come in, the, the people telling us what you should be, what you shouldn't be, and we listen to them because what? We're social creatures. Mm -hmm. But because I was going through, and I didn't even know it, until Sherry said it, her power of me, I dealt with me, right? Because I was difficult. Now I'm dealing with relationships, friendships. And in that book, I don't have that. I'm sorry. that I cannot keep that <laughs> in stock. But um, dealt with friendships, dealt with relationships, dealt with uh, work relationships, church relationships, business relationships, all those relationships. Because when you relate to people, whether it's in business, you're relating to that person. Whether it's in church, I don't care how much we put on our church face. 
you're dealing with some people who have some hurts, some some um, stubbornness, some all these issues, and we have to deal with them. And sometimes we need to put up boundaries and that we didn't learn about because what? When we were little kids, everybody's our friend, right? Everybody can't be your friend as you grow up. You cannot connect with everybody because they will bruise you and they will try to take your power to be you. So 2008, I wrote that. There was another therapy because at the time I couldn't afford therapy. I was going through that, dealing with some past relationships with men, with friends, with church people. It's okay. I got the relationships right. And so I wrote this first. And I wanted balance. <clears throat> My third book was Nightmare Males Who Make Your Life a Living Hell. Because <laughs> I was digging deeper into what the other men in my life, why am I letting them control me, control my emotions, rent space in my head when they're not even physically in my life? What is the soul tie? So I wrote that just like this, but it was 99. Because <laughs> I had 99 men in my life, whether it was cousins, brothers, uh, uncles, bosses. I'm like, okay, what is going on? Again, it is a, it was a, a way to see the why, why the act. They act the way they do. That was when my 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 uh, my interest in counseling started to spark. I was like, okay, okay. After that is when I wrote, "Girl, you can win." Yeah. Now that I got myself together, my relationships <laughs> with men and friends, I realized that I'm a winner, baby. How many people saw the uh, movie Mahogany? I live in, in fantasy world sometimes. Yeah. The movie. Mahogany yeah. with Diana Ross, yeah. Billy Williams, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 and, and, and a line in there says, I'm a winner, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking about when I titled that book. I'm a winner, baby. <laughs> whether I have issues, whether I'm difficult, whether I'm in repeated relationships, I was born to win. My parents uh, created an environment for me to win. And so I need to go and win big in life. That's when I really discovered my purpose. My purpose was to be, to empower, to encourage, to be a contagious uh, model of just, you can do it. My thing was, at that time was, I'm going to change your no I can't attitude into yes I can actions. Because when you think you can, you're not. So you have to say, yes I can. And again, it came from a movie. Does anybody know? Movie again. Yes, I was can. that Jerry Maguire? That's um, um Nutty Professor. Nutty Professor. <laughs> oh, Nutty Professor. I'm telling y'all, I'm I'm a movie person. <laughs> yes, I can. Yes, I can. So that was my. You <laughs> <laughs> didn't know she was yes, getting into it. No, I'm but good, when you good. start saying yes, I can, I can go back to school and be a counselor. Yes, I can. I can go back to school and be a principal. Yes, I can. I can start my own business and still be uh, have my uh, day job. I can do them both until one uh, until the Lord tells me, okay, it's time for you to do one full time. All right, I can do it because we can do everything that we put our mind to and that we have support systems in place. So when I said I'm a winner, when you start going up and you start thinking powerfully and start exercising your power in me, don't you know that people will try to depress that? Yeah. Yeah. They will try to put your fire out, yeah. try to make you quit, try to stop you from being who you are supposed to be and who you believe you can be. So my fifth book was You Can't Quit Now, How to Keep On Going When You Feel Like Giving Up. And I had to go back and read that every year. Because when you go to different levels, when you exercise the power of me, when you walk in authority, there are high, people at higher levels that see your glow. They see, your, they see your, your confidence. They see your determination to be everything that you want to be. And because they're not being who they're supposed to be, they get envious. Not mm -hmm. jealous, but envious. Yes. Envious when people want you to be in the same misery as them. Mm -hmm. And so they start doing everything to attack you, mm -hmm. to throw stones in your, in, your, uh, in your plan, in your progress. So I wrote that book, You Can't Quit Now. My manager here helped me decide mm -hmm. on, the, on the cover. And it's somebody almost at that finish line. And they fall in there. But you can't quit. You got to find your, uh, your energy to rise. You got to find people in your life who is going to say, get up, girl. Get up, Evan. 
you can do that business. Get up. I know it's hard. I know you. this was a, a failure right there. They bruised you. Mm. They defeated you. They weren't on your side, even though you helped them. Mm -hmm. when, you call, when, that, when you called for help from them, they didn't answer their phone or they put you in that daggone voicemail. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate that. I just want to see I'm Capricorn and the Capricorn coming. Well, they tell you to hold on and put you on hold. Ooh. Don't put me on hold. Don't put me on hold. I will hang up. <laughs> Ooh, I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> nope. Don't oh, I'll call you back later. And then 22 hours later. That, when you have time to do that, you have time. Anyway, it's my <laughs> issue because I still got some issues. Yeah, come. Like nothing going on. So. You have to keep going. Perseverance. I call that my perseverance guide. It's a it's a guide of forty two daily uh, stories about my life, how I had to keep on going. And at the end of each chapter, do a self reflection. I have to read that every year. I wrote that book in twenty thirteen, and this is just a I'm giving you a journey of how Tanya developed the power to be me. Um, to twenty thirteen, I finished my counseling degree. Got, got a job after a year and a half. Six <clears throat> rejections. On that seventh job, I got the call and said, we want to offer you a job. I wanted to quit, but I didn't because I knew that's what I'm called to do. So in 2015, I'm, I got the job and things are going great. You know, I'm making, I'm with the principal who's making, you know, told me his vision. I'm in the school. And you see, I'm just a big kid, right? Kids are drawn to themselves. So all the kids, all come to Miss White's office, all the parents. Because kids go home and talk about who their favorite person in school. So when I'm see, because I work where I live, I live, so I always see them at the Walmart, Kroger, Walmart, Walmart again. She's always with me, and we hear, this White. And so the person like, I hear your name all the time, Miss White. I said, I know I love it. And so I make it conscious to remember the kid's name. Because when you remember their name, they they know that you are really trying to have a relationship with them. And that's what people want. They want to be accepted. They want to be appreciated. They want to be acknowledged. Acknowledged. So, as again, as you go up, going up, I'm in my purpose, climbing higher. That devil, those, those naysayers, those envious people come in. To depress me again, to make me question who I am, make me question: Am I good enough for this job? So in 2015, I started thinking: Am I really good enough for this job? So I asked myself: Am I good? Am I good enough? How many people ask themselves enough questions? Oh yeah. Am I good enough? Am I thin enough? Am I attractive enough? Am I qualified enough? <coughs> All those enough questions. Am I supposed to be here? Am I doing enough? All those enough, I call them enough-isms in this book, about six books. And for all my life, I didn't know that I was always questioning, am I enough? Am I enough? And when you question that, you're always in performance mode, trying to perform for whoever you're trying to get approval from. And so when you don't know that you're enough, you are powerless. You're not exercising the power of me. And so when I really, this took me two years to write some soul searching. I go back and I really look at myself and when I when I was a child. Like I said, we were all born enough. So in there, as I said, we are born enough. You see that smile, that cute little chocolate drop right there. That baby right there. Full of confidence because we're all born enough, right? I told you I had great parents. I had wonderful parents. So they nurtured me. This is that cute little chocolate drop at seven. <laughs> then I got my hand on my hip. I'm always that Capricorn. <laughs> but I told you the world bruises us, right? <clears throat> so this is the picture of me at my senior year in high school. This picture was five months later, my freshman year in college. I was kind of, I have a slight smile on my face. That I'm hiding. Because when you go to away from your parents, mm -hmm. you really get tested on who you are. Mm -hmm. You really get tested on what society, how society sees you. You really get tested where you're from, what your parents do, all that. And so I, when I was doing this book, I said I was hiding who I was. Mm -hmm. 
and I became bruised. So that was 18. So when you get you become bruised, you start. I mean, I'm an eater. I eat out of emotion. So that's what happened. I gained like 150 something pounds. Let me show you. I was almost 400 pounds in 2010 because I was questioning. I didn't have confidence in myself. I was eating my emotions instead of dealing with them. Instead of saying I am enough, <clears throat> I was eating them away and hiding myself. That little, I call it that little sad queen. I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy at all. So when I started losing the weight, I had not been in surgery in 20, 2010. Lost, uh, so far, I've lost 140 something. Hey, I'm still yeah. living, a, living the healthy life. Thank you. Listen, and I didn't like take pictures for all my 30s. And so now when I'm on social media, it's like, Tanya, why are you always taking a selfie? But they don't know. I've got my power back. Mm -hmm. I've got my power. I love who I am, even though I'm difficult. <laughs> yeah, come on. All of who I am. All of who I'm not. All of who I shall be, I love. And so... This is the picture, and I take a I take a selfie every day. Cause in my mind I think I'm Beyonce. For real. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Beyonce, I'm, I'm Beyonce's fan. I mean, she's just got she's just in the forefront, but you know we talk. <laughs> but as you can see, the grin is is authentic now, because from the inside, mm -hmm. I love who I am. Mm -hmm. I have my power. I can roar. I am a lioness. The queen of the jungle of my life, right? Mm -hmm. So, as I close today, how do we walk in authority? In the power of being, being us. And just four four things. How many things? I told you I'm a music TV. What song do you think we're going to close out on? Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Sorry. 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 She's she saying, oh, gosh, because she knows I go to a place yeah, where I really think I'm Katy Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 20, I'm, I'm telling you. I know it, but you know, sometimes I'm Tiance 90% of the time. But when I hear roar and fire, firework, I'm Katie all the way. It could be in the store. It could be in the mall. If I hear that song, it's, it's see, that's what she does. That's she does. I don't care. Because that song means something to me. So, roar, what does it mean? When you are walking in authority of the power of being me, are you're going to walk in the realness of who you are. The authentic person. You're getting to the core. Who am I? Not what my title is. Not how much money I make. Who am I? The realness of who I am. I am an encourager. I am an ambit uh, ambitious. I have a purpose. I'm very focused. I'm lovable. <coughs> I'm approachable. I am capable. I am enough. That's who I am. So th that's who I am. And when you walk in the realness of who you are, you won't walk around in shame. You won't walk around trying to avoid people. You won't walk around trying to be put on a mask here at work, a mask here at church, a mask here with your friends, a mask here with your family. That's too much. I'm about to be 50. I can't ask too much right now. There's too much going on. I can't do it. So when I walk in the realness of who I am, I'm going to feel what? Beautiful. But I'm lovable. I'm approachable. All right? So the realness of who you are. Oh. Oh. You walk in the omnipotent power of the creator. You know that some it's not you. You answer to somebody higher than you. Whatever you believe, there is somebody, a spiritual being who is how, higher than you. You walk in that omnipotence. And omnipotence means all power. All right? A. What did I say A was? See, I told you I'm 47 in 265 days. What's A? What's A, Emery? It's all right. I'll go to my laptop. I'll go to my laptop. A, help me, Jesus. No, it's not apt to authenticity. Uh, authentic, no, because it's realness. Authority. authority. Duh. That's in my, that's in my title. 
Lord. Authority. You walk in authority. Uh, walking in authority means you're walking without shame. You're walking without compromise. You're walking without having to feel guilty and uh, compelled to explain yourself to people. If they don't understand, that's okay. They don't pay your bills. They don't wake you up. If you're sick, they're they not going to take you to the doctor. You walk in the authority of who you are. Our responsibility. We have to be responsible, you guys. Responsible with our words. Responsible <laughs> with the way we treat people. Responsible with the way we lead people. And a lot of people think leadership is a position. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an energy of influence. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have the position, you are influencing somebody. Mm -hmm. Somebody is watching you. Somebody is being inspired or uh, uninspired mm -hmm. by who you are and how you act. So we have to be responsible. We have to deal with our class. You know, <laughs> difficult. I deal with that on a daily basis. I, I love who I am, though. I deal when I'm, now when I'm wrong, it doesn't take me forever. I won't hold grudges. I won't roll my ass and say, you better not speak to me. You better not speak to me. <laughs> when I was a piss of Jesus. <laughs> I, that's how I was. It's in here. All these women I need at some point in my life. But when you walk in the realness of who you are, because you take that time to discover, to deprogram yourself, mm -hmm. when you are walking in omnipotent power, when you are walking in an authority, and when you are responsible for every a a facet of your life, then you can roar because we are walking in the power of who we are. Yeah. All right? So y'all ready to say Katy Perry? <laughs> Y'all so really gonna think I'm Katie. All right. <laughs> I'm telling y'all. I love it. I love it. I really was a singer in my in my other life. The A-list singer. Maybe, you know. I think I think I was. Y'all ready? We're gonna roar. You guys gotta stand up for this one. You can stand or you can just sit there and roar! Do you want to lighter? Can I lighter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I really do in life. Yes. Oh, we got some Katie face. Left, right. Yeah. She's like, I'm out. So I'm sorry, but